Yeah, I'm uh, coming at it from uh, a kid. I suppose a kid's perspective. I'm. Uh, I still like to think of myself as a bit of a, a kid in nature, and um, yeah, I think that's what uh, I'm trying to explain for today is um, that we need to just find as many ways to stay in nature as possible and enjoy and be a part of nature. And I think the Green Schools is doing that in so many ways. So I'm really happy to be here, really happy to support the Green Schools because this model of um, getting kids outside is just, it's necessity and I'm glad to see the schools that are, are, are taking it up with such passion. Um, yeah, my mum's a green school officer up in, or she's a teacher doing her green, green flags in uh, Mayo and she just tells me every day how amazing it is and how the kids love it so much and yeah, it's just really, it's really positive to see which way it's going. Like when I grew up, you know, like I'm sure most of you do as well, like we built tree houses and played in, in the lake and the river and all these great things and that's what I remember as a kid and it, it's, all of a sudden it came a bit more harder for kids to get into nature with, you know, traffic and different things that aren't, uh, it's not as wild as it used to be and uh, the green schools I think is the way forward and the forest school approach. I've, uh, I travelled to England recently and I went to a forest school and I really think this is the next step for schooling and maybe to adopt into the green schools. And yeah, the forest school approach is just so much fun. You're outside, you know, that's your school. You're, you have a little structure and you have a place to get out of the rain, and, but you're basically free to learn outside in nature. And for me personally, like, you know, everything I learn is best through doing and outdoors and we all learn differently. Um, but I think the forest school approach and the green school ideas are such a really good way for, for us to, to learn, but also to, be outside, in nature, be healthy. These are all the things that are the most important things, I believe, and as a parent now, I'm looking at um, my daughter growing up in a world where I'm, these, are the, these are the issues that I'm really concerned about, that she's connected to nature through school, and I just hope that the, the whole Green Schools program keeps, keeps growing the way it is. Um, I'll give you a little background to where I'm from and um, where, where, where I've got to. I, I grew up in uh, Mayo on an organic vegetable farm, so I've always been connected to nature. That's my background. My dad's a very passionate organic grower, and my mum's a teacher as well, so I've always been learning and outdoors, and that's kind of our whole under, uh, kind of background. And, I, and then my dad, to get away from the farm, we used to go surfing. We used to go down to Ackle Island, and we used to go for a surf just to get away from the farm for a few days and I just got totally fixated on surfing. And it doesn't have to be surfing, it could be you know, cycling, or we used to do a lot of hill walking and camping, but surfing was my thing. And I got so fixated on surfing that I just surfed and surfed and surfed to the point where that's all I wanted to do. And I became a professional surfer. It was a dream, as my, when I remember when I was 11 years of age, I decided I was gonna be a professional surfer. And everyone told me I was totally mad and you'd never do this, but dreams do come true. You know, if you work hard and you believe in your dream, you can do it. And my dream is to be a surfer and travel the world and experience all these great waves. And I did, and I got there, and I was in Australia and Tahiti and Fiji and all these beautiful places. And then I started going back each year, and I was going back each year. And I, for about eight years, I was going back to all these beautiful places. But then I was starting to see a lot of negative things that the places when I first started to go were so pristine or were then starting to become polluted and there's rubbish in the water and you know trees that were there when I was first started going there were then getting cut down and all these things were quite common in every country I was going to and then I'd come home and I'd see all the same story as well that our beaches weren't as clean and it was all becoming a bit kind of too much for me to to, to, to ignore and I, I eventually got to a point about five or six years ago where I couldn't be a part of the problem anymore because me going on a plane wasn't helping anyone and I had to sit down and really think long and hard about my professional surfing career and I actually said you know what I've, I've dreamed of this I've got to do it I've got to surf these beautiful waves I got all around the world but now it's my, my time to go back and do something 
and I had to think about it, what can I do? And I'm not, um, I'm not a genius, I'm a pretty simple guy, and I, re I re realized I, I don't have, to me, I feel like I don't have much to offer. But then I was like, I grew up on a farm, you know, I grew up growing vegetables, and I, I love growing vegetables, and I love being outside, and I was like, you know, that's not a bad thing to do. So I said, I'll go home and do this. But I don't want to do it just for me, because it's easy for me to grow my own food, but what about all the kids and all the, the people who didn't grow up on farms and don't know how to grow food? So I instantly, I wanted to open the farm up to anyone who's interested in growing food and just meeting each other and talking about food and talking about how, you know, everything interacts with each other, be it the birds and the bees and the water, where it comes from, and all these things we're all connected to. So, th so we started this community garden, that's the photo behind us, and... Um, it was a really organic thing. It just happened really quickly. We opened the gate. We started, you know, clearing the land and planting some apple trees. And now we have this, in, in two and a half years, we've got this thriving little community garden. And, people, and what we do is every Friday from like April to Halloween, we have a, a little weekly cook-up in the community garden. And it's from about, you know, four or five onwards, a nice summer evening, all the veg is from the garden. And whatever's growing, you know, that week is what we eat, and we teach people about, you know, this is what's in season, this is what we should be eating this time of year, and we show people how to cook it and the recipes, and with the community, everyone comes together and everyone has different ideas, and it's a really good way of learning about food and how to, you know, make it really tasty, and it's not just about eating your greens, it's about how it can be really good for you, and so we've done this for the last two years, and it's, it's really snowballed and bubbled, and I just really want to promote it because it works, you know, and it's, it's so much fun. And out of that, we have all these great ideas, like we have kids' workshops, and, you know, we have singing workshops, and we, we have music events, and as many little ideas as we can get to get people to come into the little garden and experience a small slice of nature. And you're, you're really just experiencing the tip of the iceberg. You're seeing, like, all these little ideas, the flowers, the herbs, the the little buildings, the little seats we make, you know, the arts and crafts, and it gets people to see lots of fun ways that we can be involved in nature. And I, my, my dream is to hopefully get people inspired by this and come and visit, you know, come and see the place, you know, come to our events, but then also bring it to your own neighborhood, and it's really not hard. Like, we did it with our, basically just with our own two hands, you know, there was no money involved, and it just takes a little bit of community effort and it works, you know, it's a really nice way to... What I also see in community in Ireland is there's not enough green spaces, not enough healthy, you know, social spaces for kids and parents and old people who like gardening, all to be in one place. And this is one place that we can all get together, we can all share in good food, we can all help, you know, teach the young people how to grow food, the old people get to pass their knowledge, and we get to know our neighbors, you know, there's not enough places where we get to know our neighbors anymore. And I really enjoy this concept. No one's ever made any rules in there. It's just very, whatever your community wants out of your space, you can make happen. If you're more into just gardening, you can be more on that. If you're more into flowers and landscaping, it, it can go whatever way people want it to go. And that's what's really nice about it. And then the next thing that's happened out of the community garden in the last two years is a few friends of mine who got really into this um, have joined with me, you know, this dream of trying to show people about food and, you know, learning how to grow food. And we've, en we've ended up now buying 17 acres really close to the community garden. And we're, gonna, we're starting a, a community-supported agriculture farm. And the idea of this is, again, it's a community-run farm, so we'd have... You know, it depends on how big your farm is, but generally around 100 members, so 100 families sign up with the farmer, with us, who bought this land, and we'll grow your food for the year. And you don't have to worry about going to the supermarket, you don't have to go, you know, go to, go to the, you know, get in the car and go drive. It'll be there from that farm every week, and the farmer commits to you, the community, and the community commits to the farmer. And this way, it's a lovely way of building, again, a community around nature and around farming and bringing people together. And it's, we did a, a, a tour of the UK because this concept has been around for a long time, but it's only just starting here in Ireland. And we went to the UK to visit some of the best CSA farms. And I tell you, it's amazing just to see a community that knows 
their farmer and knows their neighbors, knows where their food comes from, and they can come and help. You can come down and help on the harvest or help planting, you know, whatever's going on that week, you can get involved. And that way, you really know where your food comes from and you really understand how food is so important and how we grow it is so important because we all know the, the term, you are what you eat. So if we don't grow food really well, then we won't feel very well. So when you see the farmer caring so much and why they put so much effort into it, you really understand the importance of it. And then you can, you can learn that, but also get involved if you want. And that's the really nice thing with a, a CSA run farm is it's not just up to the farmer. You can be as, as involved as you like. So I'm going to be really passionately doing this for the next few years. And if anyone ever wants to learn about it, you can come and visit and, and try and encourage people to, to, to look into this idea because there is CSAs, there's even a few around Dublin already starting up and you can, you can get involved or you can talk to a farmer who's, there's a lot of farmers who are not sure what to do anymore because you know the, 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 the model of farming in Ireland at the moment is quite centred towards going to big farming and that doesn't work as communities. We need small, diverse, biodiverse farms that look after the environment where have we all have a connection to it. So it's a really good model. It's, it's the way where we're, gonna, we're really trying to go down in Clare. And I, I welcome anyone to come anytime, especially in the summer at our, our weekly cook-ups and there'll be events throughout the year. And yeah, just please come and, come and visit. It's, it's for the community and it's to try and engage young people to go home and inspire their parents, inspire their neighbors to also start a community garden. Cause the community gardens are like a catalyst. They're like a small little ideas hub where people get together, like this event today, is you get a bunch of really positive people together and the ideas that flourish out of this are, you know, you don't know where they're going to go. And the, the community gardens have been proven that there's, you can't quantify the result of a, of a little community garden. When you get a bunch of people together, the, it can go anywhere from there. So I just really encourage people to support a community garden if you have one in an area or maybe try and meet with you know your friends and your parents and go let's let's start a community garden in our area if you haven't got one because they really work they're really fun and it's a really good thing for when the school finishes that's what we found when the school finishes we have a lot of kids that come out of school and it was spring and they were getting into the garden and they're doing things around the school to green green schools and they're getting really into it and then it's summer holidays and where do kids go to keep this going, you know? And the community garden, we had, for every Friday, what we do is we'd have a little workshop in the afternoon for kids. And it was great, it's a place they can keep continuing things they were learning in through the green schools. And, they, and it's really funny, because we'd ask them like, oh, what are we doing here? You know, and you all know, like you're learning this in the green schools. You're learning about the rainwater harvesting and the upcycling of things. And you're really getting to put it into action throughout the summer when it's sunny and warm as well. And, you know, you don't have to run back in and study maths or anything. You can actually do this for as long as you want. And it's, it's a really good place to continue on what you're learning in school in community gardens. And I think, yeah, please, please get involved. Please um, come visit us. And yeah, just good luck with the green flags. Because I think, you know, I'm, I'm really passionate about the green schools. I, I hope to I've been talking to a friend of mine, Roisin, who's involved in the green schools about trying to get a, a food flag where your school actually you know, learns about the production of food and grows food on the school. Like, I, I love that dream that you could all be growing your food to eat in school. It's probably a little bit away yet, but you're learning all the basic steps. You've got them all now. You've got the recycling, you've got the biodiversity, you know all the principles. And I'd love that to go another step further to you actually getting to produce your own food and tasting your food and seeing how, how it works. And yeah, I really look forward to seeing the, the green schools evolve. And yeah, I'm, I'm all for it and you're doing amazing stuff. It's, it's inspiring to see the kids know a lot more about nature and a lot more about the environment than most adults. And even walking around the room already this morning, the, you guys are onto it far ahead of uh, most of us adults so keep up the great work and uh, yeah I'll see you again I'm sure oh, all right <laughs>